As we've seen in other videos in this series, there are a very large number of yellow flowers in the reserve. But there are also many plants with purple, blue, pink, and red flowers. We'll look at some of these now, guided by longtime docent Margaret Phileas. Good morning, Margaret. Good morning, Jeff. <laughs> Let's talk about the purples and the blues and the reds, because we focused on the yellows. But there are some gorgeous flowers as well in these different colors. Right. Can... seen a lot this year. The rains have been good to us, good to the flowers. Purple Nightshade. That's a scary name. <laughs> right. You might think toxic. And yes. <laughs> it is. It's in the family of deadly nightshade then? That's correct. But it's also in the same family as potatoes and tomatoes. Oh, I, I knew I never liked tomatoes. <laughs> but I love potatoes. In fact, if you look at the fruit of the purple nightshade, they look like little tomatoes. So what habitat do you typically find it in? Hmm, I guess it's mainly the coastal sage scrub, but it, but it can be under um, some chaparral shrubs. Is it low growing, medium growing? Medium growing, I guess, uh, depending on your, <laughs> your uh, uh, measurement. Um, maybe up to two feet or so. Okay. And it, it's kind of a sub shrub rather than an annual type growth. The inflorescence is, is really attractive. Uh, it's got the, the five petals, but the, the really interesting thing is the, its little green glands at the, the central area, and um, also the way the stamens are tightly together around the pistil with the, the stigma sticking out. So when a bee comes in to pollinate, and it's usually a bumblebee that will grab the, the uh, anthers and shake the, the pollen out. And my recollection is the anthers are somewhat yellow colored. So from a They're distance, very yellow, yeah. right. So you see the yellow dots against the background of the purple, and that's pretty typical. Right, and, right. Uh, and the, the, the um, Anthers are kind of almost like little barrels 